Homo rudolfensis, the savanna hominin. In 1972, scientists found an unusual human ancestor's skull in Kubifora, Kenya, and named it Homo rudolfensis. This discovery revealed that Africa's Rift Valley was home to multiple early human species around 1.78 to 2.3 million years ago. These species, including Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis, had to adapt to live together. However, classifying them as part of our human family tree is still in debate. In today's video, we'll explore Homo rudolfensis, their discovery, appearance, role in our ancestry, and many other curious details. Join us in this intriguing chapter of our evolutionary story. It's fascinating to think that not too long ago, our evolutionary history was marked by various types of humans existing in different parts of the world. This concept can be surprising since we're used to being the only human species around today. The surroundings that existed during the Paleolithic, often known as the Stone Age, were dramatic. It was not uncommon for populations to move, communicate, and even to breed with one another. Thankfully, because of the increasing sophistication of archaeological methods and the technology that is currently available, we are able to see the lives of ancient human communities. This makes the world of Paleolithic more like a living tableau rather than a frozen museum diorama. That said, about two million years ago, during the Pleistocene era's Galassian age, there was a hominid species called Homo rudolfensis that had since gone extinct. It wasn't until 1972 that the first fossils of this species was discovered in Kenya, Africa. This discovery was made in Lake Rudolf, which is now known as Lake Turkana. That's right, Lake Turkana is the very same site where numerous other hominid fossils were discovered. Bernard Ngenio, who was a member of the team led by Richard Leakey, the son of the couple who discovered the fossils of the Homo habilis, discovered this two million year old skull, even though it was lacking a lower jaw. The skull, known as KNM ER1470, looked like Homo habilis, but was different in several key ways, such as its longer face, large brain case, premolar teeth, larger molar, and flatter face. Some anthropologists suggest the skull belonged to a male Homo habilis to explain why it was bigger. Other researchers said the difference was too significant to be explained by sex, so they gave the skull the name Homo rudolfensis because Lake Tucana was once known as Lake Rudolf. Some other researchers have been left wondering if this isn't more accurately described as an Australopithecus, just one with a large brain. Well, since there is only one good fossil of Homo rudolfensis, the real answer was quite a tough one to come by. In 2012, a team of researchers announced that they had dug up three new fossils that matched the lone Homo rudolfensis specimen. These new finds were a confirmation that at least two species of Homo lived in Africa two million years ago. All three of the newly discovered fossils date back to the Kubifora area, which dates back 1.78 to 1.95 million years ago. The team that made the findings was headed by Louise Leakey, the daughter of scientist Richard Leakey and paleontologist Meev Leakey of the Turkana Basin Institute. One of the new fossils, named KNMER62000, has a juvenile's face. It is very similar in form and characteristics to the first KNMER1470, despite the fact that its cranium is substantially larger. Rather than being the male counterpart to Homo habilis, researchers argue that this proves that Homo rudolfensis was an independent species. The two other fossils that were found were two lower jaws that resemble the upper jaws of the KNM ER1470 and KNM ER62000, pointing to the same specimen. The new jaws are shorter and more rectangular than the known jaws of Homo habilis, which further indicates that Homo rudolfensis is a distinct species. Neither the new fossils nor KMN ER1470 are specifically named as Homo rudolfensis by scientists. Their prudence stems from the presence of the Olduvai Gorge fossil, 087, which represents a lower jaw. 
scientists use OH7 as the standard fossil for defining Homo habilis, or the type specimen. But the fossil is very distorted. As a matter of taxidermy, the jaw would have been reclassified as Homo habilis if reanalysis revealed that it genuinely belonged to the same species as the recently discovered jaws. Therefore, Homo habilis, the species currently known as such, would have to be renamed. Be that as it may though, the name of the fossils doesn't matter as much as the improved evidence they provide. That two distinct Homo species existed in Africa throughout the early Pleistocene. Well, Homo erectus's appearance 1.89 million years ago has, of course, made that number three species. But let's go into details of the taxidermy of Homo rudolfensis. Their multicellularity, eukaryotic makeup, and their ability to move firmly place this species in the animal kingdom. Their notochord, or backbone, marked their membership in the Cora data film. Furthermore, since their young was breastfed by their mothers, these animals naturally belonged to the mammalia order. In terms of classification, Homo rudolfensis is a member of the primate order, which also includes baboons and monkeys, along with other primates like chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans. They were also considered to be members of the Hamididae family. Physical Characteristics When compared to Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis was larger and more robust. It had a heavier face, jaws, and a larger dentition. On the basis of the type specimen KNMER1470, it was believed that the lower faces of these individuals were relatively orthognatic. Their faces were lengthy. It was believed that the newly discovered material at Kubifora would lend support to the reconstructed facial morphology of KNMER1470 and shed light on previously unknown elements of the face and jaw. On the other hand, Romage and his colleagues in 2008 have carried out architectural constraints evaluations that have demonstrated that the degree of orthognathisms would be impossible to achieve from a biomechanical standpoint. The molars were massive, with complex crowns and thick enamel, just like other contemporary and descendant species. However, they were longer on the mesiodistal side, making them more primitive than habulous. However, still, its encephalization quotient, or brain size, may have just been 3.0, which is significantly lower than the range of 3.1 to 3.5 that is estimated for Homo habilis. The brain had an average volume of 751 cc. Regarding the postcranial material that some researchers attribute to the species, it is not known for sure that any of it is warranted. It is possible to make the following statements about the species if the postcranial material is considered to be part of the Homo rudolfensis hyperdom. Their innominate, femur, larger head, robust shaft and shorter neck, and limb proportions were more modern, with longer legs and shorter arms. And the femoral robusticity corresponds to increased strain generated by a wider pelvic aperture. Now, let's talk about the environment they lived in and their way of life. In the majority of the region, grassland was the dominating ecosystem. In this particular period of time, the climate was becoming drier and cooler. There have just been a few studies conducted on the food of this species. Nevertheless, the morphology of the teeth and comparisons to other species indicate that plant matter and, most likely, meat were consumed. And their culture? Despite the fact that no archaeological evidence was discovered to be associated with any Homo rudolfensis remains, it is known that these individuals lived during a period of time when human predecessors were engaged in the production of tools. The first rudimentary stone tools, which included simple choppers, core tools, and scrapers, were crafted as early as 2.6 million years ago. These tools are classified as Mode 1 technology, often known as Older 1 technology. Uncertainty surrounds the identity of the individuals who fashioned these early stone implements. Homo rudolfensis is a unique early human species discovered in Kenya, existing around 2 million years ago. They had different features from other early humans, like a larger brain and distinct teeth, living in a time when the world was changing 
they might have eaten both plants and meat, and perhaps even made simple tools. Discovering them adds exciting details to what we know about how early humans lived. Their story helps us learn more about where we, humans, come from. It's intriguing to think about how they might have interacted with other human-like species back then. Considering this fascinating backdrop, we are left to wonder, if we encountered Homo rudolfensis now, how would they react to us?